Hello everybody and uh, welcome to today's uh, workshop, video editing for dramatic films. My name is uh, Tom Strenad and uh, yeah, welcome to today's session. So I'm the lead digital artist of the creator space and just want to start off by uh, thanking all our uh, partners in this project uh, for making uh, this possible. So we have uh, the Canada Council for the Arts. We have our library partners, which are the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. So uh, you can always access uh, all our sessions. Uh, I just put a note up. So if you go to our website, you can access all our sessions, tbmcs.ca. So you can look at past workshops. So, you know, a lot of sessions on uh, video editing, um, you know, how to uh, do dramatic, uh, some past dramatic ones, documentary ones, and we have all the basics. So, you know, how to get started with uh, uh, the software we'll be using and uh, some of those techniques. So feel free to access that resource. It's a, a really great resource. And uh, as I mentioned today, we'll be looking at uh, dramatic film editing and uh, the software that you can uh, access is free and it's also available through the library partners. So we have uh, iMac computers that are designed for video editing. They're available at the Blue Mountains Public Library and uh, shortly at the Wasagi Beach Public Library and Collingwood Public Libraries as well. So that's uh, really exciting. So you can always access those computers um, for editing as well. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. So what is dramatic uh, film editing? So let's just have a little bit of an intro and look at defining that. Like, what, is that, what does that really mean? Um, and, you know, it's a complicated question and, and concept, but we're going to look at some definitions and then we're going to look at how we can apply them and put them into practice. So dramatic film editing. So narrative film editing involves the creation of a sequence. That's what we'll be working with uh, today. We'll be working with a sequence that's already created. Um, so again, that's what we've done in some of the past workshops. So, and this sequence is based on a scripted production. So we have a script. And I think that's the big difference when we say dramatic film editing. Um, it's a, you know, scripted or a narrative. Uh, so those are some other names for it as well. Now, dramatic um, editing techniques can also be applied to other types or genres of film and video. And that's, that's kind of the neat thing too. So what we look at today, you, can, you could apply to other things like documentaries, uh, you know, video art or film art applications, um, and, and so on, you know, like music videos, performance uh, videos. So any of that can, can apply as well. So these concepts of creating drama and the storytelling can be applied to other things as well. So generally, actors perform in this uh, fictional script and the scenes are captured. And what's important here is the camera captures these scenes in different camera angles or shots. And there's usually multiple takes. So, you know, that's a big part of the editing is working with multiple takes and multiple camera angles and deciding what people see when and how and, and for how long. And that's all part of it. Then what we see after is a, as an editor, so we're looking at us as editors today, um, you got to choose the takes, you know, when to, what to use and when to cut to different angles to help tell the story. So our entire objective is always to help tell the story and how well can we tell the story and, um, you know, and what unique uh, attributes can we bring to the story as well. So, and there's also the basic concept of editing is being able to take things out. So that could be lines, scenes. I even know here, even actors, um, you know, sometimes, you know, a whole performance might not be, uh, you know, warranted or it might not be necessary for a scene. So that can happen too, where you even take on an entire actor and, and a performance. Um, so that's, that's the whole thing. So think of editing, you know, it's that same kind of idea if we're, if we're looking at like editing, uh, you know, if you're doing like book editing, um, you know, thinking about taking words out and it's the same idea. So if you have an essay or um, if you have a, a novel, you're the editor, you know, is taking stuff out. So maybe, you know, unnecessary words or restructuring things. And that's the fun part. So we don't, even though we have a script, it doesn't mean we have to stick to the script. We can be changing things, taking words out, adding words, changing performances. And like I said, even potentially getting rid of actors. Okay. So narrative film editing process. So here's the overview. Uh, we've gone over this in a, in a past workshop as well. And, but here's kind of where we are right now. So we've, you know, we've kind of finished some of this um, and we're going to be working in a, you know, a rough cut stage, but how do we get to the rough cut? So we start a project, we import the footage, 
And again, you can look at some of the videos that go over how to import and start the projects. Then what we need to do is organize your footage. So scenes and takes, and that's usually based on the slate and script. So, you know, with scripts, um, as I'm referring to different scripts and things, so there's usually a scene. The scene takes place in, you know, one uh, setting. So right now, for example, I'm in interior editing suite. That would be scene one. If I went outside, it would be scene two, exterior editing suite, you know, and so on and so forth. So each scene number is like that. Now, each camera setup would usually be uh, an, uh, you know, alpha. Um, so the alphabet and alphanumeric combination. So we have like scene 1A would be the first shot. Scene 1B would be the second shot. So that kind of labeling is important. If it hasn't been done before, you want to add that into your editing sequences so we can easily uh, access what angles and shots we have. And then we also outline what takes. So for example, this shot right now would be 1A, take one. If I did another take, I wanted to say all of that again, that would be take two. And that's how we'd move on from there. Now, the, uh, you know, creating the sequence or timeline is the next thing. So we, we get a timeline going, creating a sequence and a timeline. And that can take us, uh, you know, moving forward with being able to put the, the scenes, to build the scenes using different takes. And we're looking at, you know, bringing it together based on the script. So that's my first uh, advice is really putting it together based on the script. Um, so here's the general idea. You edit the shots into the sequence and you're, it's based on the dialogue and the best performances. So you're looking at different takes, different performances, what works, what doesn't work. You know, there could be a, a flubbed um, line or a section and, you know, you might want to, you know, do that, uh, take two instead of take one or take three is better than take two and so on. Uh, take five might be horrible and take four is better, right? So it's it's all about watching and figuring out the best performances. Again, that's a bit subjective in terms of what you think is the best. Um, might not be what someone else thinks the best, but that's, you know, how the, the process is. What do you think works the best? And you're trying to, you're, you are the audience in a way. You're able to guide the audience. So the first cut is called an assembly cut. And that, again, is based on just putting it together as it was written or scripted. Then we move to enhanced reactions and performances to help better tell the story. And that's what we're going to look at today is, um, you know, it's kind of going to be a little bit of a unique approach. We're going to take a sequence and create different um, approaches to the same footage and sequence um, and play around with what we can do with dramatic timing. And I think that will help illustrate, um, you know, how, what we can do. And then that's moving towards a rough cut. And there can be multiple rough cuts. So you might have rough cut one, two, three. I also recommend uh, putting dates to it. So you know kind of what date is it, it is. Maybe you're working on a few cuts in the same day. So you can also put a timeline. So you can say, you know, uh, today's date and it's uh, 10 a.m. And then the next cut is maybe 1 p.m. So then you can have that kind of idea of what's, what's happening when and you know where you're going. And duplicating timelines is really, really crucial. I wanna really stress that. It's so important to get, you know, to, to edit, duplicate, so that you always have the last timeline. It doesn't take up space, um, but it's gonna be really helpful to go back and say, oh, you know what, I liked what I had yesterday. I don't really like where the scene went now. So having those duplicated timelines, you can go back and think of it as a, you know, historical archive of, um, you know, what, what your edits were a couple days ago, you might go, you know, I really liked how that scene was working. I don't like what I did with it now. Um, or when you're working with the director, they might say, hey, I want to, uh, I like what we did last week in that scene. Let's go back to that and maybe rework that a bit. So you want to have that duplication. So duplicating timelines is key in all of this. So we're really working with the same one and just duplicating it, renaming it, and we continue forward. Now from the rough cut, as, as I mentioned, you might have multiple rough cuts um, numbered, you know, one, two, three, four. You might have a dozen of them. And then we continue editing those rough cuts till we perfect every frame in action and then we create a fine cut. Then finally we lock the picture when you feel it's perfect. So, you know, again, we, you see a lot of uh, films getting re-released, uh, new director cuts and so on. So there's there's kind of this uh, elusiveness to the perfection. It's uh, this you know, kind of enigma of can you ever get something perfect? It's questionable. So you, you know, as best as you can to help uh, perfect the story is what I would say. So types of picture editing, and here's the main types. 
Um, and we'll look at that uh, again today. And, and the main thing we'll look at really is uh, cut, split edits, and we'll do some uh, effects transitions as well. So cut would be just a straight edit from one shot to the other. So we go from shot A to shot B, straight cut. Split edit, these are really fun because this is where the picture sound from the next shot comes before or after the edit. So essentially this is a, a time where we might hold on uh, an actor for their reaction or we may, might not see them uh, talking till a bit later um, and, and so on. Or we might hear them talking earlier, later and so on. Um, so it's really more about holding for reactions. That's what the split edit is doing and it makes um, what, what I like to call is uh, the invisible editing concept is you know you don't you start not to really notice that there's edits because it smooths everything out and the split edit is is great for doing that then we have our effects transitions and these things you know we're all familiar with them dissolves dips fades uh, special effects transitions so we might have wipes like things like star wars those kind of wipes across the screen uh, left right uh, top bottom so on and then we might have effects editing where we're doing like picture in picture split windows and you know that's something that is uh, might not necessarily be necessary in your dramatic editing, but it can work. There's uh, some interesting series. Um, I know the Fargo TV series, they have multiple picture in picture split windows happening for scene transitions and to kind of take us through. So that's, um, that's always a really neat thing that can, can be uh, great to do as well. It's another way to play with, um, with, with your drama. So that's the types of picture editing. Now, here's the kind of some of the, the new things we want to look at. So, we're, you know, a lot of theory we're going to talk about and, and then we're going to apply this theory. So the big question is uh, when to cut and when not to cut. And this is the question I ask. So editing theory, you know, can be really complicated. And uh, there's, there's, you know, and, and I mentioned here that as editors, we're always learning. So this, this is never a process that we finish learning. We're always learning. Every film you work on, you're going to learn new things. You're going to try new things and figure out new ways to tell stories. And that's the real fun part is that you're constantly learning. Now, there's also the technological learning. So, you know, uh, software changes, uh, types of video resolutions change. So there's a lot of technical learning. So it keeps you on your feet. And uh, so, but here we're talking about more of the creative and the theories. So what is the basic concept and of editing? So that's to promote an engaged audience to the story as it unfolds. So we're trying to keep the audience engaged with the story and we're trying to maintain the telling of the story. So essentially, you know, will it make sense? Does it make sense? And will your audience understand what the story is? And that, that's one of those tests. Like, you know, we've, we've done that. We've seen films like that before. You might go, oh, I didn't really get it or uh, I'm confused by something or you missed something. So that might be an issue where, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, the story is kind of failing in, in those kind of situations. So, you know, how do you keep people uh, engaged? And also, how do you make the story clear um, as it unfolds? So here's the golden rule of editing. And, you know, this could be how, how, you, uh, how you guide, uh, you know, the process of deciding when to edit and when to cut to, to different things. The golden rule of editing um, uh, is, is such. Um, it's uh, what is the best possible angle uh, or take that allows the audience to understand the story as it unfolds. So, you know, if you're, that's the golden rule. So what angle should you use to help, uh, um, what angle should you use to help, uh, um, you know, tell the story uh, so that, um, um, you know, you can, uh, you know, get a better understanding of what's um, happening to to the story, um, and you know what audience, uh, what does the audience need to know? Um, so you know, how does it unfold, and what does the audience need to know uh, through these shots? So in essence, here's the question: In essence, where should we be? The angle, actor, or an insert of an object? So an insert, I mean, you know, sometimes you know you have a shot of like I don't know, like a pencil is an insert where you need to see that pencil, that might be important. So whether it's me talking, you know, is you need to see me, um, maybe my hands do something. So I'm, you know, I, I break the pencil. So you'd want to see that breaking of the pencil. If you don't see the breaking of the pencil, you don't know what, that I broke the pencil. So that's a great example of just, you know, how do we 
show where where should we be at what specific uh, um, angle and type of shot to make the story make sense and and that's really a, a you know a key aspect to it um, okay so that's the when to cut and when not to cut so essentially how do you make things uh, um, how do you make things you know make the most sense and for the story to be you know uh, told effectively and to not be confusing okay so there's some controls that can happen for the story and the drama. Um, so you can control the story and drama in the following ways. So I just had a, a quick kind of outline here. Um, and the great thing is, so we can rewatch all of this through the Crowdcast link. And then we also post these on our YouTube channel. So you can always rewatch this and go over some of these concepts again. So don't worry, I know there's some notes here that you might want to take, but you can rewatch this uh, comfortably after and, and see what we're talking about. So one of the first things, pace. You know, so the pace idea is, you know, making things faster, slower, gradual, or kind of a mixed pace to enhance the drama of the story. Now, so, you know, that could be, you know, how fast do you cut between shots or how slow do you cut? Or you're increasing pace, reducing uh, the pace. So that can be really a fun way. It's basically how fast are you cutting to different shots and, and, uh, and takes and so on. Um, so emotions and reactions, that's the next thing that you can do. So cutting to character emotions um, and reactions can, you know, help tell the story in an interesting way um, by showing how the others in the story react to what's unfolding. So that's, you know, the different characters can react differently. And that's a really neat thing where you can uh, essentially get, um, you know, the, the, those reactions um, so emotional reactions from the, from the other characters. Holding on one person talking is fine, but seeing how the other people react, that's where we really get the story. And we'll look at that today in the, in the demos. Um, so then the other thing you can do is withholding information or providing the audience with information. So that could be, you know, you're deciding what the audience can or cannot see, and then we can build tension and suspense. So you might not let the audience see something. If it's like a murder mystery, you, wouldn't, you would withhold who the uh, murderer is. Um, or you might try to show that it's someone else to try to lead the audience into something else. So tension and suspense. The other thing is, maybe the audience knows what's going on. So that's one of those typical things where, you know, the audience, that, there's a ticking clock or ticking bomb scenario. So the audience knows there's a bomb on a train, but the characters don't know. So I do an insert, I cut to the insert of a bomb ticking in the train so the audience knows clearly that that's what's happening and, it, and that's what's key to the story. So sometimes the audience might know more than the characters in the story itself. And that's a real fun thing. How much do you tell, let the audience know and how much do you withhold from the audience? It's a really interesting blend. Then the other thing that we're doing is editing the performance and dialogue. So in that basic essence, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we can, you know, we can improve performances, we can take out dialogue, we can change dialogue, uh, we can use, uh, you know, you can use different takes to create better performances by the actors. So you might use take one for the first few lines, take two for an, a little bit more, and then, you know, take five for the, the remaining five or six lines. So that can really help build uh, better performances. So that's a really neat thing. Okay, so um, let's explore, uh, you know, creating um, some of these scenes and see how what we can do with them. With It's one film and, uh, you know, we're going to look at, you know, cutting different things and, and working out different things. Um, in terms of what we're using, here's some of the tech specs. Some people always, you know, people ask, like, what are, what are we using and how are we using it? What should, what should I get? So I'd like to always go over what we're using. So we're using the Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve software. Now this is free downloadable software. And as I mentioned, it's available through the libraries as well. So through, you know, Blue Mountains Public Library, there's iMac uh, computers there with that. And it will also be available on uh, systems at the Wasaga Beach Public Library um, soon. And also by um, in, in like March, uh, early spring in uh, the Collingwood Public Library. So that's really exciting. We'll have computers up that everyone can access with this. Um, so for this workshop, I'm using Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve Studio. Um, it's version 17, which is a public beta. Uh, so the studio version just gives a little bit more unlocked features. 
I mentioned here the free download works up to 4K, so the studio gives you beyond that, and it gives you some more effects and a little bit of more sound um, possibilities and things. So um, the difference is it's about $400 to get the studio. Uh, it comes free with the Blackmagic cameras, so there's some uh, you know uh, overlap there in savings. Uh, but you know it's it's either way. The free one is perfectly you know great to start with, and you can always move up to the studio in the future. I'm using a Mac Mini with 32 gigs of RAM, and I have an 8 gig GPU, and it has an i7, uh, an Intel uh, i7 processor. So that's kind of where where it is with RAM. Um, so RAM, I always say, you know, I'm recommending 32 gigs of RAM, kind of for future proofing. Um, I think you know essentially now all the editing software out there, current versions are really needing 16 gigs of RAM at a minimum. Um, and then I also recommend you can have you know solid state drives on the Thunderbolt 3 connection if you're doing 4K work um, is, is quite important as well. So that's you know some of the tech specs of, of, of how we're doing uh, the things. And again, if you, if you need to access uh, you know different um, uh, you know computers and tech and stuff, that's the great thing is that we have those available uh, through, the, through the library as well. So let me just uh, go into the uh, Resolve software. So I'm just going to cut over here. So here's the Resolve software. And um, I have a sequence open. Uh, it's a film that we did in the master class of uh, dramatic production class. Um, just last uh, uh, February it was, uh, January, February 2020. And um, so uh, this is called uh, The Meeting. And uh, I have a rough cut that's uh, you know been assembled here, so it's kind of the first pass. Um, I'm gonna just show here like on the side, so I had like a rough cut one. I made a duplicate, um, so I'm gonna just call this a, a rough cut two, oops, there we go. Um, and I'm just, I'm just wanna make it a demo A, because we're gonna do different uh, concepts with these. So I'm just adding a little bit of notation for myself too. But generally it'd be rough cut one, rough cut two, and so on, as I talked about earlier. So let's look at um, you know some of the some of the sequence work that we can do and we'll identify you know the straight cuts and then some of the um, uh, the split edits and then we'll look at how we can change uh, you know some paces, different pacing, play with reactions and change the dramatic uh, mood of uh, of the film. So here we go. So I'm just going to play a piece here. Oh. Yes, it is. I feel like I'm being drawn into it. It's almost as if you're entering into a dream. Ah, dreams. They can be so comforting, can't they? <laughs> yes, they can. Sometimes. Are you here for the art? Or the dreams? A bit of both, I think. Right, so here's a, you know, one of these. Drawn into it. It's almost as if you're entering into a dream. Right, so here's one of those uh, split edits. Um, so here we have the characters, we're from in, you know, behind in this shot. Um, so here's that idea of how do you decide to shoot, you know, what to edit to. So the idea here is let's establish where we are. It's a bit of a painting gallery. Use the camera to spin Hello. around. Isn't this a beautiful piece? It's so calming. Yes, it is. I feel like I'm being drawn into it. It's almost as if you're entering into a dream. So that's that split edit. So we see the character. Uh, she's she's talking, but we don't see her face, right? So that's uh, we're holding on this shot here, and here's the audio. Uh, underneath. So what ends up happening is you get these kind of like L or J uh, is another name to call these. And you'll see how they kind of pop up here. So rather than doing a straight cut, um, so I'm just going to do a, oops, do a straight cut here to show you the difference. It's almost as if you're entering into a dream. Right, so that's a straight cut going from one shot to the next shot. And now with the split, oops, I'm, I'm going to hit uh, option just to select that part that the video only and not the audio into it it's almost as if you're entering into a dream ah dreams they can be so 
comforting, can't they? Hmm. Right, and so that's, um, you know, that's the little bit of the split. And I'm just going back a few frames, so just Almost to see. As if you're entering into a dream. Ah, dreams. They can be so comforting, can't they? <laughs> yes, they can. Sometimes. Are you here for the art or the dreams? A bit of both, I think. They seem to be intertwined to me. What about you? I'm here in search of something that I can only seem to find when I'm here. I don't know if it's the painting or the lighting or the quiet. But okay, so we see the pace. So we have a, like a slower pace happening. Um, and now let's look at if we want to like, you know, speed up the pace. What can we do? Hello. Isn't this a beautiful piece? It's so calming. Yes, it is. I feel like I'm being drawn into it. It's almost as if you're... Okay, so then she starts talking there. So what I'll do is uh, I'm just going to uh, select that. Uh, piece and look I'm just gonna move it a bit forward so that she can uh, start answering sooner Drawn into it. It's almost as if you're entering into a dream Okay, almost as if you're entering into a dream and then what I'm gonna do a dream Okay, so I'm gonna just do a, what's called a ripple edit. I'm gonna cut that uh, part out it's almost as if you're entering into a dream. Ah, dreams. They can be so comforting, can't they? <laughs> okay, so now we're, see how we can change the it's pace quickly. As if you're entering into a dream. Ah, dreams. They can be so. So instead of having that pause, right, we're able to, we can cut that pause out and we're, you know, squishing things together. So we're immediately changing the pace. So let's look at some more areas. Or the dreams. A bit of both, I think. They seem to. Okay, and then this next part here. Um, can I get, i highlight these. Uh, tracks here. Okay, I'm going to squish these together. So I'm just going to keep building the pace up a little bit faster. A bit of both, I think. They seem to be intertwined to me. What about you? You? Okay, so now what I'm doing is just, uh, I'm gonna get rid of that pause. What about you? What about you? And I'm gonna get right to the next part here. So this is how we're gonna change. What about you? I'm here in search of something. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do a little bit of a split edit. And then we'll to look me. at. What about you? I'm here in search of something that I can only seem to find when I'm here. Okay, so that's great. Okay, so now. Yes, it is. I feel like I'm being drawn into it. It's almost as if you're entering into a dream. Ah, dreams. They can be so comforting, can't they? Okay, so that's, let's look at that. And I'm just gonna go back to the original cut of that. And you see how it's kind of like a lot faster. And here, here we go with this, this uh, older version. Yes, it is. I feel like I'm being drawn into it. It's almost as if you're entering into a dream. Ah. See, so we have these moments, right? Versus now here, watch the same 
I feel like I'm being drawn into it. It's almost as if you're entering into a dream. Ah, dreams. See, so the reactions are a lot faster. So we're changing the kind of, uh, you know, mood of that, uh, that pace and, and so on. So I'm going to just go a little bit uh, further on into, uh, uh, into the back here and just see like what we can do again, just with different faster pacing. We no longer live together. She is searching for her own together. So I'm just going to kind of put a bunch of these uh, pieces closer together. Just, just some of the dialogue. We no longer live together. She is searching for her own path to happiness now. But... We remain. Okay, and let me get rid of the butt. And I'm gonna put this all the way up here. So you can see I'm just kind of, you know, really squeezing, uh, squeezing shots together. So you can see that whole black space there now, I got rid of that. So that's kind of the pacing I'm changing. So watch as we make something faster. We no longer live together. She is searching for her own path to happiness now. We remain. We're old friends. Like old friends. When so the same here, I'm just gonna keep putting these things a bit closer together. Like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm and Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is just look for a little bit of a um, uh, reaction uh, uh, shot. So I know... Uh, Already I... Like they're old friends. Okay. Like old friends. Okay, so I'm just going to put that reaction shot in. And this is how we can start building different reactions. I'm just putting the video on video one. Like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel. It gets a little bit tricky because there's a lot old of friends. When I see her, she. Like old friends. When I see her, she makes me. So, we, you know, some of these reactions have to be a little bit faster, but look at the different type of uh, pace that's happening now. We remain old, like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm and... Okay, it's a very together. different feel now. She's searching for her own path to happiness now. We remain old, like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm and as calm as this painting. We used to try. Right, so same idea there. Maybe I'll say, okay, I want him just to keep talking, right? I'm not even going to give him much of a pause there. The painting. Oops. So I'm just going to as calm as this painting. We used to travel. Right, and again, we can even go less. Calm as this painting. Calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. Okay, and... I'm gonna look at some earlier shots here. Um, they can be so intertwined. Find when I'm here. here. Ah, dream, dreams. <laughs> yes. It is. I feel like I'm being drawn into it. Right. So we can we can also look yeah. at you know using different shots to to uh, compress time. That's the real fun part. To Europe. 
So I'm just going to kind of razor blade some of the sound here. Okay, and I'm just looking at, you know, how much can I compress the scene together? To Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. Okay, and just to give us an idea of what happens if we want to really have a, you know, faster pace kind of scene. So let's look at this now. We no longer live together. She is searching for her own path to happiness now. We remain old, like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm and as calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. We would argue about the merits between romantic versus romantic versus impressionist periods. Right, so, you know, not, so now we have, you know, we've taken out about, you know, 10 seconds. So very different pace. She is searching for her own path to happiness now. We remain old, like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm and as calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. We would argue about the merits between Yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit of this reaction thing here. And let's trim this part down a bit too. So I'm just putting in some blade marks and that way I can just grab this and just going to bring it in closer. The merits between romantic versus impressionist periods. Okay, so that's kind of fun. Between romantic versus impressionist periods. Right, so that's, uh, you know, what, what we can do with uh, some of these like uh, reaction uh, type shots. Between romantic versus impressionist periods. Right, so totally different type of scene um, building into, you know, this kind of a, a faster paced thing. Now, um, let's, let's look at the, the same idea. Between romantic versus impressionist periods. Let's take that same I idea. I'm going to make a copy of this. Okay. And, uh, so I'm just going to right click duplicate timeline, right? And now what I want to do is, you know, how do I, if I, if I duplicate this, I'm just going to call this a rough cut, um, three. And so here's an example. So, you know, I'm putting in, uh, some of the reaction shots. So, you know, shots of, of her reaction to him speaking, we have some of the split edits. So we hear him, we don't hear him. So that kind of technique. Um, and then, um, you know, here we have this painting insert. And, you know, this is one of those examples where maybe we decide, uh, you know, we don't want to see the painting, right? So we can withhold that too. Um, so let's see if we, let's see about doing that. So let's just totally get rid of that uh, painting insert. And maybe we decide, you know, we don't want the audience to know what they're looking at. As calm as this painting. We used to travel to you. As calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. See, now look at that kind of suspense. We're like, okay, calm as this painting. And by not cutting to it right away, we're creating that suspense. So right away, a different type of feel. We got rid of this insert and we're delaying the audience seeing what they're looking at until now. Calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. We would argue about the... Right, so that's that's kind of a cool thing, right? We got into, you know, how do we uh, how do we get uh, you know up to that that part, um, and uh, you know and, and make that work, right? So uh, that's when it.
We would argue about the merits between romantic versus impressionist periods. Okay. So, you know, see again, so we got rid of the, the insert. As calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. Okay, so that's, uh, that's our, our cut three. Now I'm gonna look at, let's take that same scene and what I wanna do now is look at, you know, what if I wanna really kind of delay the pace, right? So now I wanna kinda of do, instead of the fast, I wanna try and do a slow down. She's searching for her own path. To okay, so I'm just gonna take this, uh, this piece right here. Um, I'm gonna kinda of just split it out here a little bit. Okay. She is searching for her own path to happiness now. We remain. So now, now we're leaving some like, you know, spots of, of moments, right? So let's look how we can do that. Um, so it gets a little bit more complicated. So I'm just gonna move some stuff around here. And I'm just gonna go back to the, you know, one of these kind of wide shots. A bit of both, I think. Okay, and I'm gonna add that. So you see, they're, they're just staring and they're not talking. And now we're gonna look at how do we extend time. She is searching for her own path to happiness now. Okay, so we're kind of expanding. Path to happiness now. We remain old, like old friends. like old friends. Okay, and let's see what else we can kind of get out of the... Uh... What about you? And I'm just going to put a bunch of like time here. Okay, so now you can see what I've done is I've actually, you know, put in spaces of reaction shots in between to, you know, try to, to make that, uh, extend that a little bit more. Um, right, so. Uh, we remain old, like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm and as calm as this painting. Right, so now I might say, okay, I wanna, I'm gonna have a really long, uh, you know, kind of painting pause. Right, so this is where we can really control, it. so let's look at this now, when we're extending time. She's searching for her own path to happiness now. We remain old, like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm. And actually, let me just go to like... She's searching for her own path to happiness now. 
we remain old, like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm and as calm as this painting. Okay, so, you know, now we're totally changing the pace. We used to travel to Europe. Visit galleries and admire the works. Okay, so we're just gonna put this here. And I'm gonna, again, put a little bit more of the paintings. Now we're using that painting insert. Maybe that's really important. We wanna, you know, emphasize the story there. This, this painting. Calm is this painting. We used to travel to Europe. Visit galleries and admire the works. So you can see how that's, uh, you know, again, very, very different. And I'm just going to shrink that a little bit because it almost seems too long. calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. Right, so very, very different pace, right? So we had that fast pace and now, the, now we're going, okay, we're gonna, you know, we want the audience to, you know, that painting, maybe there's something happens to me, maybe, maybe the painting needs to, you know, comes to life or something. Um, so, you know, we're building some sort of suspense, but you're kind of like, oh, why am I staring at this painting? But we're at the same time, maybe that's key to the story, right? So we want to decide that. So, you know, look at, uh, let's, let's just have a look at, um, um, you know, this, this kind of a, uh, a pace. Um, and, you know, what, what kind of pace that is, um, you know, versus uh, own path to happiness now. We remain old, like old friends. When I see her, she makes me feel warm and as calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe. Visit galleries and admire the works. Okay, so that's that. Now, let's go back to what we did before. I see her, she makes me feel warm and as calm as this painting. We used to travel to Europe, visit galleries and admire the works. We would argue about the merits between Romantic versus impressionist periods. Right, so totally different type of conversation. So it's kind of like, you know, going, 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 and, you know, not, you know, it's, and it's kind of like, you know, in, in a hyper time versus the other kind where we're like slowing things down and, you know, doing that. So, you know, here we have, we have split edits, we have inserts, we're deciding, you know, suspending time for the audience in that other cut. And in this one, it's a lot faster of a pace. So that's a whole, you know, very dramatically different. Um, you know, we're using different takes for different lines and, and so on and so forth. So now, you know, what's the right way, right? So in my opinion, um, you know, I would be using that other one if I'm really delaying time, if there's, you know, I'm building towards something that maybe is gonna happen. Maybe that painting falls off the, the wall. And that would make sense to, you know, really delay that and focus on that and then it would fall off. And that would kind of, you know, help in that story telling uh, situation. The other one, you know, the, the first cut with the faster pace um, interests me a little bit more because it's, I feel that that's, if since, 
you know, the painting doesn't fall in this particular story, um, you know, that, it, that keeps me engaged more because I feel like, okay, this is a, it's a bit of a faster pace uh, and so on. Now, with dramatic editing, the other aspect that we're looking at too is how do we, um, you know, keep people engaged? And a lot of that engagement is oftentimes building into almost a, a, a hyperspeed. Um, and this is, if you think about a lot of maybe your favorite scenes in different films, um, they tend to be pretty fast in, in dialogue if there's a dialogue exchange. Um, but sometimes we need that, that moment, right? So this, this film, you know, the, the female character, she's dealing with a bit of memory issues, loss. So, you know, having those reactions where maybe she's trying to figure things out could, could be beneficial. But until I know that, um, and, you know, me, you know, I need to, to, to start to introduce that where she's maybe confused or looking or, or these kind of performance uh, tweaks. Um, you know, I'm, I want to probably keep it a little bit faster because, you know, it seems more natural to be kind of faster. And then maybe, you know, as something happens, she reacts and looks and is confused, right? So let's, let's look at that of, uh, you know, kind of changing pace. So we have, I'm going to just make another copy. Um, and we're going to look at one more option, which is uh, um, uh, cut four, demo C. And we're going to look at, you know, how do we, how do we perhaps change the pace? Pressure. So I'm going to find, I'm going to look for a shot. Yes, I'm lucky to see her own. He used to argue over the, uh, the merits of romantic versus impressionist periods. She's lucky to have you, Edward. On the contrary. Without me? Well, well, I must be going. It was lovely to talk to you, Edward. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right to the end here and just see, you know, how, how, what happens if we kind of change that. Um, so let's check this out. Precious periods. And I'm just going to copy and paste that uh, insert there. And it's going to get rid of that off screen line there. And look at this. So now we're going to kind of, you know, they're talking, it's building. Impressionist periods. Well, I must be going. It was lovely to talk to you, Edward. Uh, and I'm just going to get rid of it this part here okay so now look at this so we have kind of the fast build up and then um, and then we get into like this pause I see her she makes me feel warm and as calm as this painting we used to travel to Europe visit galleries and admire the works we would argue about the merits between romantic versus impressionist periods I must be going. It was lovely to talk to you, Edward. Okay, so look at that. So that's that really cool part where we can, you know, work on, uh, you know, kind of this faster exchange. He's talking about like, okay, this, 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 the painting and remembering these works. And then we cut to the work and then, our, then she's just looking at it confused. And that helps us transition and change. And now what I've done actually is I've cut out a chunk of the film uh, or, or the scene um, so that you know he talks about reminiscing and then she just looks at it confused and she's like I gotta go um, 
And, you know, that could be great. That could be a new way to do the scene. Um, and, you know, there's some more exchange, but I, I might just be saying, okay, I want to have, you know, he's going to reminisce, talk about what it was like and traveling and how, you know, art affects him. And she just looks at it confused. And then we start to understand, okay, well, why is she confused about it? And there's a bit of a mystery to that. Um, so again, so that's kind of the option C where I want to build the story into that. And this, you know, that really helps me carry the story forward. So you can see how we can go pace, 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 fast, fast, fast. And then it kind of stops. And, you know, she's just looking confused. Like, okay, what, what is this? Why, why am I looking at this painting? I got to go. And then, you know, what seems to be like a good conversation, she just ends it and, and is confused and wants to leave. Um, so that's really great dramatic work. And, you know, that's kind of the essence of what the scene's about, where she starts to, you know, that's his wife, but she's confused and not realizing that, you know, he's talking about their memories together. Then we kind of figure that out after. So that's a really neat way to to deal with the the dramatic story. So yeah, perfect. So those are some of our examples. Um, you know, and, and again, you can see how you know just these kind of pauses of space um, and condensing uh, versus when we had a really long delayed one um, cut three, and we had these really big pauses. You can always see those like black pauses of sound and. And we're expanding time and really making people think about, you know, why, what's up with this painting? Is it important? What's happening with it? So really different ways to do it. Okay, so we have a few minutes left. So, um, yeah, let's go to, uh, if, if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, let me know. Um, I can uh, address those uh, right now. Um, so, you know, happy to, uh, to go over any, uh, any questions. Um, and uh, uh, like I mentioned, you can access this through this Crowdcast link, and then you can also um, access uh, it through uh, the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so it just kind of here's here's one note that's uh, coming up, and uh, um, yeah, the film editing is is really uh, important because that you know the editors really help shape performances and can make things. Uh, you know, kind of ordinary performances into extraordinary. And also it's the ability to fix things. And, you know, that, I, I, you know, I can't stress that enough how great it is to be able to fix, um, you know, the odd line or also to change things. So I just, that last cut, I just cut out like, you know, another couple minutes of the scene and just to end it like that. And, you know, that, that could be really effective. So I think, you know, the, the best editing is, the kind of fearless editing um, and I would really recommend for the dramatic scene is you know don't be afraid to end it earlier just because there's two more pages of dialogue that was filmed you know and if, if you think okay you know what I'm, this is like the best moment I can just end it now and get into the next scene and you know the other it, there's too much banter I don't really like what's being said or you know maybe I like the beginning and the end of the scene and in between it's not working if something's not working as an editor, chances are it's not going to work for the audience. So, you know, for for the audience's sake, you want to be able to to uh, to deal with that. So, okay, and let's just let me just look at what questions are popping up. Yeah, so just a question about the Apple M1, uh, the new Mac Minis. Um, so yeah, so there's a little bit more. That, that's a good question because there's the 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 M1 processor chip is kind of a uh, you know, takes away the need necessarily for the, for more RAM. And it's, there's a 16 gig max on those. It's, it's last I checked with specs. Um, so any kind of editing of 4K, the main thing here is I, I had a little bit of stuttering because I'm just using a, a regular uh, uh, drive. It's not a solid state drive um, with the footage. So apologize for a little bit of the delays there. But uh, what happens is you, for 4K, you really need, um, there's the computer part and equally the uh, hard drive part. So, you know, it should be on a solid state uh, drive to, uh, to get the um, maximum uh, 4K capabilities. So it's, it's more about the hard drive plus the computer. Um, so if you don't, if you're using, you know, kind of the tradi traditional Intel chips, i7s, uh, you, you need, uh, I really recommend the 32 gigs. Um, and then some of the GPU, um, uh, you can get an external GPU. So the Apple M1, I would, probably still recommend getting um, uh, potentially some e e external uh, graphics processing 
for editing uh, can help, um, but it would definitely be able to handle uh, the 4K video. It would just come down to having a solid state drive as well. So yeah, great question. Um, and that's that's really important. So uh, you know, I always recommend if you can, you know, get a solid state drive um, for the the 4K uh, video, or you can always um, uh, convert it to HD for editing and then go back to the 4K later. Later, and that's a lot of times. Um, that, that's a recommended practice as well as kind of down sampling it for editing and then you can use any kind of drive um, and then uh, you know you have a good performance thing so yeah that's perfect so um, yeah that's all the time we have uh, for today but want to you know thank everyone uh, for joining us again you can rewatch it check out our YouTube channel um, there's more editing uh, you know sessions coming up on uh, Saturday we're going to have one on mastering for festivals. So if you have your final film and you're looking to master, I highly recommend that session. It's Saturday at 10 o'clock. Um, so sign up for that and we'll be going over, uh, you know, DCP uh, for festivals and, you know, what kind of uh, the main thing like Apple ProRes uh, masters and creating those to get to festivals and how to deal with festivals and uh, some of the, the requirements. So that's uh, definitely check that session out if you haven't already signed up uh, for that. So that's Saturday at 10. Okay, so once again, uh, thanks to uh, all of our partners in this project. We have the Canada Council for the Arts, our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library. We have the Collingwood Public Library and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Uh, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed that. Uh, you know, again, a little bit different looking at kind of theoretical versionings of the same scene, fast pace, slow pace, and then, a, you know, a fast to a flip with a pause and a kind of finale uh, reaction. Um, and how we can, uh, you know, create the same, take the same footage and create three very different scenes. So you, know, you can see how practicing and playing around with footage and exploring, experimenting can only lead to different uh, outcomes and different ways of telling the same story with the same footage. So I encourage everyone to try it out and uh, I'll see you again soon. Have a great rest of the day. Take care.